Okay, one one quick follow up on Daz. Um, he tried to say that he destroyed Tupac reels. Did you ever hear about that? Do you know what he's talking about when he refers to that? Well, we all know he put out some of them trying to sell it to y'all for fifty and a hundred dollars or five hundred dollars or whatever. And I just told y'all Daz had the ability to put uh, his vocals on stuff like he did with that Usher remix. What I I still tell y'all was the most creative and the best thing that he ever did. Daz probably ain't never met Usher in his life, but he had the biggest remix song of all time that you would have think Daz and Usher was in the studio together and recorded that that uh, that that remix of You Think You you Make Me Wanna. I'm telling y'all, Daz did that. Daz was the king of that. If I don't ever say anything positive about Daz again in life, I tell y'all, Daz is the one that created remixes as far as taking vocals off and adding other people's vocals to it and making a song hot, in my opinion. He was good at doing that with people that he didn't know or meet or without the reels. Any of that stuff, if y'all listen to the quality and all of that, if y'all y'all, y'all listen to it, y'all could tell that Daz just was in this studio, took off verses that he got off the internet or off of one of those Machiavelli CDs because he's a producer. He, he know how to do that and made those particular albums. He might have had a few. You know, he had access to get one or two, but the time period that he said he stole from us and ripped us off from, Edie, Edie from the Outlaws, can tell y'all, we had turned them over to the estate. That's how the settlement was done. We didn't turn them over to the estate, but Edie was there with me at Skip Sailors, where we went and bought all the CDs to the to Skip Sailor, and listen to them all. That's when Edie and them got all those notes and, and all of the lyrics wrote out and all of that. And I told you, I told them, yeah, Edie, you can take these. You can have these. Y'all ask Edie. All these people I'll be speaking on, y'all be calling me liars about are still alive. Y'all hit them up on IG. They I tell y'all. They tell y'all, well, yeah, we got the CD. But my point is, we turned all of that over to Edie came to the studio and, and, and was trying to think about all the names of the songs. And he would ask me, what happened to this song? What happened to this song? Where's this song at? Where's this song at? And b- brought them all, me and Butch Maul. Butch Maul was my guy that used to go to Pacific Archives. I was just up there making sure everything went smoothly. And then I had 24-hour security there for about three or four days because we had all the, all the reels up there. Edie signed off for the deal to get made with us in Interscope and, and, and Amaru that they got all the songs or found all of the songs except and there was a few we couldn't find that, that nobody knew where it was at. That's probably the ones Johnny J. White is holding or has. So like I said, we, we, we turned all the, uh, the songs and the masters over to Edie and not to Edie. Edie was there to supervise for the estate saying that these are the songs, him and Molly. We turned it over to Interscope. Interscope was like the escrow company for both of us, where it was supposed to hold all of the CDs or, or the master, it was the, the 24 inch reels, and nobody was supposed to touch them without us having an agreement in place. I'll explain how that ended up getting crazy later. But Interscope had all of that music. And to make a long story short, somehow the state ended up getting it. Interscope gave it to them, which I'm glad. That Interscope did give it to him because what? All of that y'all hearing about the masters got burnt up in that universal fire and all that. No reels probably would have been in that fire if, uh, you know, if, uh, if, if they still had it. And the good thing about it, the state, I'm sure they took it, probably took it back to Pacific Archives, but they took it to somewhere like that and put it under their control eventually. Uh, which that was a Tom Wally deal. And that's probably why Feeney was so in love or still loyal to Tom Wally because they did some snake stuff, but they paid for it, of course. Of course, once I found out about it, I go tell Mr. Knight, and Mr. Knight tell me, this is how you deal with it, Reggie, right? And they paid. But anyway, that's the, the long story that I was going to tell the, in a synopsis uh, or in a shorter version. So, yeah. Daz, to make a long story short, 
Daz get that story from us. We was at Track Studio one night. We brought, had Maria come up there. She came up there in a G-Wagon. Remember that G-Wagon? With, with a box loads and a, a few boxes of CDs. We did the old switcheroo on them. We took them out and put the blanks in there. And, and sent her back with those, with those blanks uh, reels. <laughs>